my dear brothers and sisters if i ask you how many beatitudes are there you will answer me there are eight beatitudes the beatitudes are the most solemn utterances of the gospel utterances that are so important that they reveal a fundamental spiritual attitude of the kingdom of god and such the attitudes are blessed are the poor the utterances that begin with that phrase blessed are the merciful blessed are you when you mourn blessed are the meek the beautiful utterances of jesus that reveal to us the fundamental attitudes of our life in the kingdom of god but there is a ninth beatitude as the gospel reveals to us today a beatitude that begins with blessed are you and that's what we read in the gospel of luke chapter 1 verse 45 this beatitude was uttered by a woman filled with the holy spirit elizabeth the mother of saint john the baptist and elizabeth uttered this beatitude looking at mother mary mother mary went to her to serve her and when elizabeth saw mother mary elizabeth was so moved in the holy spirit she uttered that solemn beatitude blessed are you because you believed that what god spoke would come true in your life hallelujah 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 faith but the mary believed but the mary trusted in god but the mary knew god's great love for her and mother mary abandoned her life to god and so because of your faith you are blessed elizabeth said and she brought blessing to the whole world because it was the savior of the world that she could conceive in her womb and because of that faith the whole of human kind became blessed now this attitude of faith places mother mary in sharp contrast with another woman the first woman the first mother eve eve of paradise god said you are cursed eve became cursed because she did not believe in the love of god she did not trust in god's love she did not abandon her life she did not believe that her life would be happy and safe in the hands of god and therefore and therefore when the devil came in with the temptation she fell the devil 
put an idea in the mind of Eve. Bad fruit. Yes, God is forbidden. You shall not eat of it. That's what God said. But the devil put an idea in the mind of Eve. A desire in the mind of Eve. If you dare eat that fruit, you will become like God. If you eat that fruit, if you disobey God, if you reject God and you hear my word and act on my word, you will become like God. You don't need God. God will not make you happy. God will not fill your heart. Do you want the fulfillment of life? Do you want the fullness of joy? Ah, that fruit. That fruit. Forbidden, yes. But God did forbid that fruit because God knew you would become like him and God did not want you. To become like God. I give you this idea. The secret of happiness. The secret of fullness. Eat it. Reject God. And you will become like God. That idea. That the devil put. In the mind of Eve. That idea took root. That idea grew and that idea brought in a doubt in the mind of Eve. Doubt. God does not love. No. If God loves, why does God object to my becoming like him? Why can't I become all powerful? Why can't I become the master of the universe? Why can't I know everything? The only way to know everything, the only way to come to the fullness of life is to reject God. What, what Satan said is right. The offer of Satan is right. The offer of God was wrong. Satan was to be trusted and God was not to be trusted. The doubt came in the mind of Eve. The doubt became a decision. Eve decided to reject God. Eve decided to reach the hand out to Satan. And Eve rebelled against God and and she lost the paradise. And she became the cursed woman. The first mother. The cursed woman. And she brought the curse of sin. Into the whole of humankind. My dear brothers and sisters. This is the beginning of humanity. And now comes a new beginning. A fresh start. Once again. God offers, offers a new way of salvation. God wanted to save the whole world. And God sent the angel to Mary of Nazareth with an offer. I want the world to be saved. But for the world to be saved, I want to send my son into the world as man but for the son of God to become man God needed a woman a woman who would conceive the son of God in her womb and bring him up as a man to be offered on the cross that offer was given to Mary and Mary had much to lose Mary had much to sacrifice. 
her own plan for her future and the terrible thought that if Joseph to whom she was betrothed Joseph would suspect her if she was to be found with child will this angel go will this angel go and tell Joseph that Mary is conceived and that is of the Holy Spirit will this angel go and tell the parents of Mary that she is conceived of the Holy Spirit will this angel proclaim to the whole world now this girl is, is with child it is of the Holy Spirit if if angel won't say that had she to tell everyone a girl 18 19 years old how could this girl go and tell everyone I am with child and it is of the Holy Spirit who would believe this and the law of Moses was clear that such women should be stoned to death Mary had many questions before her Mary had much to lose and yet and yet she made a decision she made a commitment oh God you you are enough for me you are the fullness of my life if you are there for me I'm ready to risk even my own life my questions are not important to me when you are on my side my questions are not important to me you are the answer to every question you are the fullness of life here I am I surrender my life to you here am I your handmaid let it be done to me according to your word hallelujah Till all of us raise our hands and say hallelujah 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 hallelujah, hallelujah. my dear sisters and brothers this is what blessedness is she became blessed blessed are you because you believed blessed are you because you trusted God blessed are you because you did not doubt God's love blessed are you because you committed your life totally to God the most fundamental attitude of the kingdom of God trust in God wait upon God to know God's will and once God's will is revealed offer our life to God that is blessedness my dear sisters and brothers we are people for many of us, life is become a curse. The burdens weighing down on us, the troubles that we go through every day, the challenges ahead of us. We are sad, we are broken, we are anxious. There is a cursed existence that we are living on this earth and you and I shall know that curse comes from a lack of faith we do not surrender we do not abandon our life in the hands of God remember a man came to me he was a professional a thriving professional and he married they were having a happy life together that's when he found out that his wife was sick the doctor diagnosed she was having a problem she was not able to conceive and when the doctor pronounced this judgment this man was thoroughly shattered. I will never be a father. I will never get a child because my wife will not be able to conceive. He was shattered. 
He was so shattered, he stopped going to church. There's no prayer anymore in the house. And he began to persecute his wife. He began to despise her. He would not even go to her. And for him, his friends became more important. And he took to drinking. And he thought life was meaningless. He did not go to his profession, to the office. And he was dismissed. And everything went wrong. In that state of despair, he came here. I told him, my brother, your problem is you did not accept God's will. God gave you a woman as your wife to live with, to share your life with, to find your joy together with her. And when the doctor told you that your wife could not conceive, you despised her. When you knew your plan for your future will not materialize, you despised your wife. You despised God. You rejected God's love and you went your way and you are shattered today. You are broken today. You are cursed today. I told him, it's only one way. Your life will become blessed. Once again, joy will fill your heart. Once again, peace will come to your family. Once again, God will enter into your life. When with Mother Mary, you make that commitment to God, here am I. Your servant, let it be done to me according to your word. Oh God, if you do not want me to have a baby, neither do I want that baby. What you will not give me, I will not take from Satan. No. This man had already thought of divorcing his wife and going for another woman. Because he wanted a baby by all means. That was the great desire of his heart. I told him, I understand that. A desire of every man to have a child. And yet, God's desire, God's plan for your future is much better than your own plan for your future. I told him, you are just going by your natural desire. Desire of a man to have a child. A desire justified and yet and yet you and I should be able to say God if you do not want me to have a baby neither do I want to have a baby and he was shocked he was shattered I told him wait upon God wait upon God and God will reveal to you what's God's plan for you and he made the retreat. At the end of the retreat, he made a decision to commit his life totally to God. He fell at the feet of his wife and asked pardon. And the two of them, husband and wife, went away from here in great joy. But that's when God intervened. When this man offered his life totally in the hands of God, that's when God intervened. And today, he's a happy father of a wonderful child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I want to go my way, when I insist on my plan, when I am determined to have my way, even rejecting God, even rebelling against God, God is not able to do anything for me. God will be able to do what is the best for me when I make that act of faith, act of total surrender, 
what Mother Mary told the servants at Cana. At Cana, there was a problem. Wine failed. Wine jars became empty. In a marriage feast, there should be sufficient wine to be served to all the guests that the guests may drink freely and make merry. But wine failed. Wine jars became empty. Nobody knew what to do. Nobody knew what to turn to. Everyone was upset. That's when Mother Mary knew the secret. Secret to bring prosperity and peace to that family, to save that family. Mother Mary told them, do as he tells you to. It was he tells you to. And nobody knew what he could do. Nobody knew what he could, what Jesus could do. And yet, they were ready. They were ready to do what Jesus told them to do. Everything looked impossible. The jars looked empty. And yet, and yet, they were ready to obey God's command. And Jesus said, bring the jars. The, bring, the jars were brought. Fill them with water. They filled them with water. And then Jesus said, go and serve. Serve what? Serve water. For a Jewish wedding, nobody served water. And yet Jesus said, go and serve. They went and served. What? They served water. But when the guests took and drank, it was wine. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, even at the face of impossible situations in life, even at the face of tragedies, even when everything looks dark, even when everything looks impossible, you and I shall know God is there. I am the way, Jesus said. I am the way. At every moment, when we understand we are stuck, the way is closed. The Lord is standing before us to tell us, I am the way, I am the way. And I take him as my way. I abandon my life to him. I remember a couple came here and they were very sad. They said they had no child. And they went to a doctor and the doctor suggested that they should go for a test tube baby. They asked me, Father, what shall we do? The sperm of the husband is not good enough. And the doctor suggested they could try our donor sperm sperm of some other man and the woman was in tears the man was in tears and I said father we need a child we need a child even if it is of another man we need a child I told them my sister my brother I understand your desire I deserve any couple. Now you are going to conceive a baby. And that baby will not be your baby. And you're doing it in a way that God does not want. A baby must be born not in the test tube, but out of love. And if a baby will not be born, 
the way God wants a baby to be born, why should that baby be born at all? The church does not allow such scientific methods, wrong scientific methods. Explain to them everything, the teaching of the church, the teaching of the Bible. And this woman was in tears. Later she told me, Father, if God does not want a child for us, neither do I want a child. What's important is to do God's will. God's will is more important than a child. And she made the decision. She canceled her appointment with the doctor. You know, today there are any amount of doctors doing this. She said, no, if God does not want to give me a child, I don't want to take that child from the hands of a doctor. No, life is to be given by God. What God does not give me, I do not want to stand before a man to take. No. And they adopted a child. And today, they're a wonderful family. And they're living a happy life, witnessing to God's salvation. Hallelujah. 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 My dear sisters and brothers, this day, we need to learn this lesson. Never doubt God's love. Never doubt God's plan. Never question God's commandments. The one thing, the basis of our life is God. If God created me, if God sent me into this world, God has got a plan for me. For my good future, for my prosperity, I accept God's plan. I obey God's word. And I believe God's word is the best option. God's plan is for my salvation, for my good future, for my prosperity. That is a surrender that Mother Mary made. That is the surrender that made her blessed. She became the ninth beatitude in the Gospels. Blessed are you because you believed. And every one of us, we are to become beatitudes. Believing in God, trusting in God's love and determined to obey God's will at every moment of our life. Amen. Thank you.